Tonight, Wendy McPherson attempts to become the second woman in history to win the coveted WIBC Queens title for the third time. The odds are in her favor as the first two Queens victories came right here in Reno, Nevada. Will Reno's Lady Luck stay on her side? Find out next. The PWBA and the WIBC return to the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada, where five finalists are hoping it is the striking place as they get set for the finals of the prestigious WIBC Queens Tournament. Competition begins tonight with a breakthrough game featuring 25-time titleist Tish Johnson, the 97 Rookie of the Year Lisa Bishop, and 17-time champion Robin Romeo. The one with the highest score will break through to take on the athlete currently ranked fourth on tour, Kendra Gaines, and the winner of that match will face top seed Wendy McPherson as she looks for Queen's title number three. Hello everyone, I'm Jan Schmidt. Thanks for joining us for the 43rd WIBC Queens Tournament. It's part of the Triple Crown and a prestigious title that every bowler wants on her resume. Wendy McPherson's already completed the Triple Crown, but as I mentioned, is looking for that third Queens title. Lisa Bishop and Kendra Gaines are seeking their first Triple Crown win tonight. And for two of our veterans, Tish Johnson and Robin Romeo, the WIBC Queens title has eluded them for more than 20 years. Here to talk about that is a lady who won this event in 2001, Carolyn Doran Ballard. Carolyn Tish has won just about everything, did everything except win the Triple Crown. Well, what a great way to start our 2003 season with these two scenarios. Tish has been on tour for 23 years and has 25 titles. But what title is the most important to this PWBA millionaire? the WIBC Queens. She wants the Triple Crown and she wants it bad. I watched her bowl all week. She's throwing it great. She's confident. And let me tell you, with Tish being the only left-hander on the show, let's see if she uses that to her advantage. Well, how about Robin Romeo? Retired more than a year ago, yet she shooed him up to come out here and try and win this Queen's title again. Did Robin Romeo retire in 2000? I think not. She has rededicated herself. Although she does not want to bowl full-time, she has worked on her physical game, her mental outlook, and her physical conditioning. With these three components, she wants to be back to become a competitive athlete. She has two major victories, but the WIBC Queens is the one she wants to complete the Triple Crown. What these ladies tonight don't know is, Robin had a dream a few nights ago, a very special dream, and let me tell you, she has a secret weapon they don't know anything about. She's gonna be tough to beat. Jan, I think the ladies are ready to start. They sure are ready to start, and Lisa Bishop will go first. She qualified fourth, it was her she had the second choice of which lane and what position to go in. Robin Romeo, the third qualifier, had the first choice of where to start. It was so quiet, and someone in the audience actually, actually went, shh. <laughs> now all of a sudden, with all that going on during practice, now they're going to decide to make a noise while they're on the approach. <laughs> a little bit of confusion going on, and... And I'm sure Lisa Bishop wants to get that first ball off her hand confidently, not be distracted, so she wisely stepped off the approach. I spoke to Lisa while they were practicing. She said she had a lot more back end than she had all week. She's opted to go with a ball that's going to start up a little soon. There we go. Read the middle part of the lane and be a little more mellow on the back end to kind of control the back end reaction for her. The lane conditions this week, we bowled on a synthetic surface with 21.16 milliliters. The length of the oil was 36 feet. The type of oil was offense. The heads, the front part of the lane held up very well. Gave us a nice open shot around the track area. As the week went on, the ladies were able to move a little bit further right. And what an opening shot for Lisa Bishop. And actually, we weren't, it looked like we were waiting for Lisa, but we actually, they were getting the machines going and the scoring going on these huge overhead scorers that are in the National Bowling Stadium here. Robin Romeo, her first television show in quite some time, nearly three years. And here's a look at Tish Johnson. As you mentioned, Carolyn, the lone left-hander on the telecast. Could make or break you. The last title, I believe, Tish won, though she was the only left-hander on the show. So... We'll see what happens tonight. She told me last night, Tish did, that she thought that would be an advantage to her. She'd, she'd get her shot and quit practicing. Mm-hmm. 
Robin spares it up. Ooh. <laughs> Still a bit loud. <laughs> and she's, yes, yeah, safe, safe. Tish Johnson always playing to the crowd. Lisa Bishop qualified fourth, 203 average. That was her entire tournament average. She actually won, was one of the lower averages, 201 in qualifying, 204 in match play. Lisa made a comment last night and said she drew good people in match play at the right time. You know, she either hit them on a pair where she had a really good shot and they didn't, or vice versa, but she put the pressure on them to have to perform. It worked out to her advantage. Robin up quickly in the second frame, crossing over and getting a big break going Brooklyn on that shot. As you talked about Lisa in the draw, she had Carolyn, her opponents only averaged 187. So she did definitely have the luck of the draw here. That's what this tournament's all about, hitting the right people at the right time and on the right pair of lanes. Tish Johnson had a pretty high average, conversely 213 for the tournament. Only 197 in qualifying, but boy, did she uh, get on the ball in match play, so to speak. 221 average for her match play games. Ooh. Looks like Tish m uh, missed way right on that shot. She said the lanes got a little bit tighter for her towards the end of practice. She wanted to use a stronger ball with a little surface. I'm sorry, a weaker ball with a little surface so that she could really hit up on it. And this is the, the problem here. With a little bit of back end, you hit up too much. There's that hook in the middle part of the lane. And this is the result. Whoa, great spare. And that's what, you know about it. Yeah, that's what you want to see early on in this match. Lisa Bishop getting set. She struck the first time on lane 25. Lisa's best finish last year, seventh in Burlington. Right here Here's Tisha's shot. She uses her strike ball, throws across lane, taps it, throws it over, and there's the spare. Using that sidewall just a little bit. Okay, Robin taking advantage of that Brooklyn last frame. Robin still looks a little tentative. She said she was a little nervous, has, hasn't been in this position in quite some time, but I, knowing Robin the way I do, she'll, she'll come through. I imagine not being on a show in three years is a little, it'd be a little nerve wracking. Yes. Lisa Bishop going up high, leaving that the big four there, taking two of them. And actually did not look like a, a, a really bad shot that Lisa threw, it looked a little slow. She said this week she really had to pay attention to her ball speed. Eight and one in match play. Yeah, big shot for Tish Johnson and Carolyn. Let's quickly let them know the format very different in this tournament. Just 10 games of qualifying, two five round blocks, and then they cut to the top 25%. Five more games, cut to the top 64, and then what kind of match play? Well, we cut to 63. That includes the defending champion from the previous year. And then you go into three game matches. Once you lose, you go into the contenders bracket oh, for three game matches. If you lose again, you're out. And I can honestly say I was in that contenders bracket from the second round of the tournament. And it's a very long two days. <laughs> you went right down to the wire as Robin Romeo with a three bagger there. Carolyn taking on Tish. Tish had to beat you in that final game in order to get on the fifth spot of the telecast. But yeah, that contenders bracket, you just bowl every single round. Yes. Three games, three games, three games. You just continue all day and night. High game, 276. Another great shot by Tish. She looks really comfortable. She's been working really hard on staying behind the ball, and uh, she's doing it great. Well, only one will break through this game to advance. Robin Romeo has the early lead. We'll be back with more from the National Bowling Stadium in just a moment. Information, merchandise, and more. Robin Romeo in the lead here. She's actually up by only 14 pins over Tish Johnson. She's up by 36 pins over Lisa Bishop. But the closer match, Romeo and Johnson right now, the two veterans battling it out. Lisa Bishop on the approach to try to pull within 26 with a strike here. Well, she basically told you what she did. She tugged it left. And then with that back end, the, the snapping on the back end, there is no hold yet. 
So she's got to still project the ball down the lane and get it even. Actually, she said she had a little area to the right. Good shot by Robin, leaves the ring 10. Well, on this score condition, Carolyn, you know, not a lot of room, and that's what we've talked about all last year, not a lot of room to make a mistake. No, and like I said, with using the offense oil on this surface, what it seemed to create a shot around the trap, and when you moved a little left, yes, there was hook to the left, but there was a little area to the right in the track area. So if you were lined up to it correctly, you could score a bunch. Well, there's a big smile out of Robin Romeo as she didn't think she had that 10 pin when she put it down. Tish Johnson, a Hall of Famer, both the professional or women's professional bowling Hall of Fame, WIBC Hall of Fame. Oh, and tit for tat, leaving the seven. Oh. Tish is down on lane 21. She ran that one out. She really liked that shot. She's throwing it really good. She's worked uh, hard over the break. She bowled a lot of tournaments. She says she really wants to keep in shape because, you know, it's starting to take a little bit of a toll on her body, she said. Lisa Bishop had made this queen show before. As you saw, it was 98. She finished fourth. What I want to see. Didn't carry that 10 pin. No, it looks like Lisa moved a little bit to, uh, further right. Go a little bit straighter up the lane. Left the 10 pin. So Romeo still ahead of Johnson by 14 pins and 35 ahead of Bishop. Miss Lisa Bishop attempts to shoot the 10 pin. Change into a plastic ball. Doesn't hook. Going cross lane right to it. Couple of Hall of Fames for Robin Romeo as well. Here's a great shot by Robin. She's a lot more aggressive now. Starting about the third frame. Here's some of the things Tish has done. Not very many, of course. You know, heart, highest Thanks. margin of lead after 42 games, most 300s in a season. Consecutive uh, Peter V tournaments bold. This was number 237. Yes. Talk about an iron woman. My goodness. Well, yeah. I'd, yeah. I'd say after 23 years, your body might tell you you're a little bothered. Most consecutive 200 games bold in qualifying, 18. And most consecutive 200 games on TV, 9. I mean, she's always there. She's always been a factor. She's a great champion. Lisa Bishop making a move there on the lanes. Making a big move. Playing more into the track area on the left lane. Didn't like what she had playing out. She's trying to find something here. And don't forget for Lisa, it's it's relatively early in her career. You know, she's looking to get that first leg of, you know, of the triple crown, but she has four titles under her belt. She'll be around for a while, but for these other two veterans, they are just like I said, 20 years, more than 20 years, they want this title. Right. She's been a member of Team USA. She's got a WIBC title. She's always around great bowlers, and she's always working on her game. Oh, 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 push it. No, not going to happen. Light hit by Robin, leaves the seven pin. She seems like she gets this ball. Robin got the ball into the lane a little soon. The ball doesn't quite finish, hits light doesn't tap out the seven. When she was bowling the best this week, she was getting the ball out onto the lane and really coming up behind it. Seems like she's been getting it into the lane a little early on the TV pair and not getting the, the good pin action. Another good shot by Tish Johnson. Robin shooting the spare and these two, Robin Romeo, Tish Johnson going at it here. And if you wonder, I find this hard to believe. They're showing a career TV stat of those two only meeting twice on TV, one and one. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. All those years. Yeah, so this is the uh, rubber match, so to speak. Lisa Bishop over the break worked with Michelle Mullen and Alita Sill on her game, loosening up her arm swing and making her first step smaller, which helps her to get that momentum. She said she really has to work at keeping her shoulders upright, Carolyn, to get a better leverage position. All the time. She She's mostly square at the line. She's worked, though, at trying to be a little more open, but always working on her ball speed. Robin Romeo and carries the strike. Carried that 10 pinch, got that ball out onto the lane a little more, conserved a lot more energy, tapped out the 10. Tish Johnson, as you mentioned, Carolyn, really been working out, doing a lot of practicing. She really likes this elimination format. She thrives on it. 
She likes the head-to-head -head competition. Three games, a lot of the ladies said the same thing. You have three games to get lined up. They really like it. The breakthrough game is almost over. Right now, Robin Romeo still in the lead, but barely, just by seven. We'll be right back to see who survives. It was May of 2000 when Robin Romeo teamed with longtime roommate and friend Jeannie Nacarado to win an emotional doubles victory over Aussies Nabel and Giannotti, 231 to 207, in memory of their fathers. That was Robin's last victory, and she retired shortly thereafter. But one stone was left unturned, and she's here, working to try to win that Queen's victory and complete that triple crown. <laughs> she caught her watching that on television. It was a very emotional victory, and that was just about three years ago. And she would like nothing more than to, than to feel that victory again. Right now, Robin Romeo in the lead over Tish Johnson by seven pins. She's over Lisa by 39 pins. Lisa Bishop has to strike, and she begs for a carry, but... Good adjustment off the bad shot on, the, on that lane last time, leaves a four pin. Robin's high game, 269, low game, 173. That's pretty consistent. Good what? shot by Robin, four pin. Exactly, 173 was a good low game because there were a lot of games lower than that this week on particular pairs. Lisa covers up that spare. Robin Romeo will shoot at the four pin. She's in the lead by just seven. Tish Johnson could step up in the ninth and take the lead if she strikes here. Nobody will be able to shut out Tish Johnson. Big, big shot here. She can take the lead by three pins. Well, one of the things Tish still says, I love this game. I still love the competition. I still love to bowl. So if her body holds up, I think we're going to see Tish for a few more years. Oh, great shot. Hold. Missed just a little left. She says hold, and it does. This is the result. She didn't know that was for the lead, did she? I'm not sure. <laughs> Looks like she gets it great off her hand, but she, you know you missed a little right. But look at that. She's starting to create her little area. Lisa Bishop now in the 10th frame. Best she can shoot here would be 190. Great shot by Lisa. Lisa's a hard worker. She's always working on her game. She's always helping people with their game. She works in a pro shop at home. She truly enjoys the sport of bowling. She's, she's a good ambassador for our sport. Okay, Robin Romeo really needing to strike there, needing to put the pressure on Tish Johnson. Made a good shot, got it out on the lane, kept it nice and direct, just left the four pin. Now we can tell everybody about Robin's dream. She had a dream that her dad called her and wished her luck this week. And she said, you know what, maybe it's an omen. And here she is on TV, so there's proof positive that there's somebody always watching from above. Yes, there is. She was hoping to have another dream last night. That, that was pretty, I, I, I had goosebumps listening to that story. So she spares it off. She can strike here for 218. That would be Robin Romeo. Lisa Bishop is out of this match now. Spares it for 180. Great week for Lisa. We're going to see a lot of Lisa Bishop. She's one of the up and coming. Only on tour seven years. She's got a long way to go. So Tish Johnson will need good count in a mark in order to advance here. Well, good count, mark, good count to advance here into the semifinal match. She had a seven count earlier and a six count earlier on this lane, but has struck the left two out of the four times. Oh, gets the break. Wow. Looks like she got a little quick on that shot and missed it way right. I am too old for this. Yes. <laughs> that did not want to come off my hands. See, she said she missed way right on that shot. She was way right at target. Goes cross, trips the four out. She likes it. Got to take advantage of it. Nice going, Robin. Much better shot. She said the first shot didn't want to come off my hand. Doesn't want that pressure. I highly do. I highly doubt that from, from Tish. Yeah, you know, she always performs under pressure.
Look. So Tish Johnson breaks through past Bishop and Romeo with a score of 242 to 180 and 218 to advance. But first, the most important vote in women's bowling oh, history is coming up. I can't get up. Learn more about it when we come back. Welcome back to the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada. I'm Jan Schmidt along with Carolyn Doran Ballard, who has actually just left my side and is standing down on the lanes with Tish Johnson. Tish, you just shot 242 to take you one step closer to win in that triple crown. How do you feel? I don't know, getting them in the 10th frame, I couldn't, I, I, my thumb didn't want to come out of the ball, so I just tried to push it down the lane and pray, and the next two shots were pretty good. Robin and Lisa both great all week, and I'm just trying to stay behind the ball and give it everything I got. You've always been known as one of the crowd favorites. You always have a lot of people behind you, a lot of friends, a lot of family here today. Does this help you with your confidence or your nerves? You know what, I think it is any job you have, if you enjoy your job, I think you should have fun doing it. And if you get the crowd into it, that gets me pumped up. And, and I think they have fun, too, because they get to see how we actually really are. Good. Well, I wish you the best of luck, and go get them. Thanks. Well, Tish enjoyed that game. She defeated Bishop and Romeo 242 to 180 and 218. There's more bowling to come, but right now some important information in this week's WIBC Extra Frames. We, we will now move forward back to action. Tish Johnson faces Kendra Gaines in the semifinal match when we return. Okay, Tish, you need to bowl now. Tish is, Tish is cue in the crowd. I think you think she's going for Fran's job as tournament director later? She's always been a crowd favorite, especially here at the WIBC. She's got her brother Rex here, her friends Sunday and Vicky. She wants to say hi to her mom. They're all watching. I mean... She's always got somebody behind her. She's, she's just a crowd favorite. Semi-final match, leaving a seven pin. I mentioned tournament director Fran, Fran Deacon, actually. She is the PWBA tournament director. Ruth Williams is the tournament director here for the WIBC Queens tournament. Great come out shot for Tish, ring seven. Career earnings, 1,063,000. Shit, you bowled a lot of tournaments over the break that were the 40 and over. She goes, I'm proud of it. I don't care. Yeah, in, uh, in California, 40 and overs in the senior bracket. You know, seniors are 40 and over. So she uh, jumped right in and did very well. In fact, I think they want her out. Yes. Talking about raising that age. Kendra Gaines had a very, very successful season last year. Six years on tour, two titles. Great come out shot for Kendra. She said she went to a weaker ball with a little bit of surface on it so that it would let her stay a little further right. They broke down since practice, but she still doesn't feel like she wants to move in. Kendra also, 5-1 in match play, was the benefactor of good draws in the matches. Her opponents only averaged 189, and her tournament average overall was only 201. Everybody said that. I mean, it's, you know, the people that averaged 220 did not necessarily stay in the winner's bracket or make TV. I mean, it, that just doesn't matter. It's who you bowl at the right time and on the right pair. Another great shot by Kendra, going a little more direct. She's definitely further right than she was in practice. Boy, it was interesting talking to Tish about this title and all the things she's done in her career, how if she said this would be number one. Well, you'd figure out of 97 appearances, she'd, she'd have the Queens as one of them. Oh. Oh. Great shot by Tish. Stone eight. I guess that makes up for my Brooklyn. <laughs> Good shot. Misses just a little right, a little left in the heads. Tish likes to belly the heads. But great result at the end, except for the Stony. Except for that, but, you know. She thought it was going. Said it made up for her Brooklyn. She spares it up. And I mentioned the lady who she beat in order to get into that, Carolyn Dorn Ballard. Also, Carolyn shot a 300 this week. Carol Giannotti finished up in seventh. She was the 89 Queens champion and a Robbie Award recipient. Um, finished up eighth, Cara Honeychurch. And uh, Holly Hoopai from 
uh, Hawaii, was a member of the Junior Olympics team. Really, really young, great bowler. Another good shot by Tish leaves us a six, leaves the six pin. Well, she's not real happy about her carry right now, but she she's in the pocket. She'll just keep keep doing what she's doing and hope they fall. She told me right after I was done doing the interview with her, she likes her reaction and she's starting to feel a little more comfortable. Clever's the spare. Another person been bowling a lot over the break, Kendra Gaines. So she did seek out competition wherever she could find it. She won a regional. She actually flew to California to bowl a tournament. So she's been really working hard. She said right after the full swing, though, she took two months off and then started to bowl back. She felt refreshed. She worked out a little bit. And she said, once that time was up, I was ready to go again. Ooh, missed a little left. Oh. And that's the result. That's the one thing that happened the whole week throughout the entire house until the lanes got to where there was a little bit of the hole to the left, little hook to the right. Here she gets out of a quick misses way left. Ball goes right through the nose. And let me tell you, when the ball goes through the nose here at the stadium, it's more than likely a split. I saw a lot of those. I'm sure you did too. She'll take the wood here and take two pins. Smart. She was on a strike. Those two pins mean four to her. Kendra, another one who said she really likes the life or death type of format. And she said it makes her put more importance on every shot. You throw more, fo more focused on the pin count like the two pins right there. But isn't that something you focus on all the time anyway? I, I think it is. I mean, obviously, you're always wanting to make a good shot. But it's a different aspect when you're bowling one game match as compared to three. If you don't bowl good in the first game, you can try something different. You can change balls. You can change lines because you have two more games and total pins is what counts. So it is a little bit of a different mentality. I've even seen some people throw away some pins to test a strike shot on a split they know they wouldn't pick up because they have three games to make it up. Absolutely. It's, it's a, definitely a different mindset, yet you still at times have to make each shot count and it's just, you know, your judgment call. Best 2002 finish first. Oh, finally gets a break. Good shot by Tish. Goes just a little high, but a pin from the back, trips the six, gets a break. And she's saying thank you. And she saw it on the big screen, so she's going to step off a little bit. Wait a minute. Yeah, right <laughs> above the bowlers, well, quite a bit up, is uh, a big screen of the bowlers, and, and they can watch themselves. Six-time WIBC, seven-time Bowlers Journal. Big strike for Tish Johnson. So through four and a half frames in the semifinal match, Johnson's up by 13 pins. Stay with us for more action from Reno. This week, 354 entrants, 34 700 series, and two 300 games, Maxine Nabel and Carolyn Doran Ballard. 21 matches decided by 20 pins or less. That's a three-game match. Every pin counts. It really is an exciting format. If, if no one has ever come to the WIC Queens, they really should. It's, it's a great format. So look at the dollars there up for grabs here in Reno. 14000 for first, right on down to 5500 for fifth place. We're midway through the semifinal match. Kendra Gaines now trails by 13 pins. She can take it back to three if she strikes here. She's in the fifth frame, working on a strike. Kendra said she was very happy with her performance this week, that all her work, hard work that she's been doing over the break, she feels like she's been rewarding little high, missed a little left again, went just a little high, leaves the four pin though. Gets it in just a little bit. Goes just a little pop, a little high at the end, still has a, quite a bit of back end reaction, leaves the four pin. She actually took some time off on this break as well and worked with her husband, John Gaines.
bears it up, and Tish Johnson now in the lead here by 13 pins. I think Kendra said she had to make the show because they're moving into their new house in a week and she has to buy more furniture for it. So they are. I think John was putting the pressure on her. Mm -hmm. 1997 WIBC All Events Champion, if I believe. That was here. Yes, it was. Right here at the stadium, the National Bowling Stadium in Reno. See, she's made the show. She won the WIBC All Events here. Wendy's won here. She's on the show. There's something to be said about that. The people that bowl well here say that they just always bowl well yes. here. Great shot by Kendra. High flush. Okay, so Tish Johnson working on two in a row. Up by 13, can make it 23 with a strike here. Tish's fourth WIBC Queens TV appearance. Third, fifth, and fourth. Wow, is she looking for the first. Oh, going up high, leaving the 2-4. She's flicking her wrist a little bit when walking back. She said at first when they started, she wanted to come around it a little bit. That's why she was using a little bit of a weaker ball. Now it seems like the, she might be experiencing just a little bit of transition. Wants to just keep it clean here. Takes the 2-4. Tish going to try to tie Leanne Barrett if she would win tonight. Number three on the all-time title list. Right now she's tied with Patty Costello for fourth. That's an, that's some impressive numbers there. You know, I'm just thinking that like you're reading my mind. Wow, there, there was five or six great bowlers right there. Yes. Five. Looks like Tish took her hand out of that one a little bit. Goes light, blows the rack. We'll be right back to see who gets a shot at the title match. Right now it's Tish Johnson up by 11. Don't go away. Rhea Granham is watching Kendra Bull. Actually, she's wearing one of Kendra's shirts with the Hammer logo there on it. She's 12 years old, and she is recovering from brain cancer. She's going through chemo treatments and the wonderful thing about this is she drove back and forth with her father from Sacramento just to watch Kendra Bull every day. So we wish her the best and yes, she's do. one of our up and coming future bowlers. She yes. loves to bowl and she says Kendra is my Michael Jordan of bowling and I think that's just wonderful. So we wish her all the best and we're glad she's here. We do. She was getting autographs from everyone. A lot of these ladies are, are role model types to, to the kids. So Kendra now up in the seventh frame semifinal match. Down by 11, can take it to one. Yeah. And she does now a one pin match. Gets this ball a little bit further right than the last shot on this lane. Ball still recovers a little high, but gets the break this time and trips out the four. So she can take the lead here with one more strike. She's down by one. She can, she'll take the lead by nine with a strike here in the eighth frame. Kendra also mentioned pair to pair. You had to be really up on the changes the lanes were making and stay with it. Oop, she can win out. You yeah. can hear that. Oh, might get lucky, a break. Lucky to leave just the six pin on that shot. Got a little quick, double dribbled. Got lucky to leave the six pin. She said she wasn't real sharp at making the changes as quick as she wanted to this week. Well, you know, it's, it's different. First tournament back, here it is. You see how it gets out of her hand right past the foul line. Kendra usually gets it out onto the lane a little bit further, right there. Bounces right over the foul line. She'll let you know it by saying, oh, no, and that's the end result. But she covers up the spare. So Tish Johnson now in the lead by two pins. Boy, this is a... A close one here as we're winding down. Tish in the eighth frame can take the lead to 12 with a strike. Tish wants to make as much money as she can so she can buy those houses and help remodel them over the break. Ninety-five and ninety-two, player of the year. 
Missed way left on that shot. Looks like she threw it a little bit hard. She knew it too when she went oh after she let it go. Leaving the bucket. Difficult, can be a difficult spare sometimes. <laughs> I personally think the bucket's hard any time, but that's that's just me. But anytime you leave more than one pin, it's it's a little bit tougher. She needs to convert to keep her lead intact. She plays it off her strike shot, makes the spare, and she's covering her face. I can't, I'm not so sure she was sure about it either. There's all her friends there on the side rooting her on. I don't think she was certain whether she was going to pick up that spare or not. But she's relieved as she maintains a two-pin lead. Stepping up in the ninth frame will need to strike here to set it up so that Kendra Gaines can't get up and shut her out. Good shot by Tish. She's saying, come on. One thing about Tish, you don't have 25 titles without being able to throw it for the cheese to be perfectly honest she sets it up for the foundation frame for her 10th frame well Kendra Gaines now will need also to set one up she'll be able to strike in the ninth and 10th to force a double out of Tish Johnson Kendra's second WIBC Queens appearance her best finish fifth got that one out on the lane a little bit harder Great shot by Kendra. So Kendra's responding equally well in the ninth frame. These are her four shots. Missed a little left, split. Missed a little left again and goes high. Leaves a four pin. Projects it a little more to the right. Still goes high, but gets the break and trips out the four. This one. Gets it a little more further right, moved a little left, got it right, high flush. All well, the shots on the right lane, making subtle moves, so small, very hard to see. She said that's what she did all week. It was subtle moves, nothing big, because she didn't want to give away the pocket. There it is. She knew it when she put that one down. That's strike number one. Tish Johnson's going to have to match, basically, what Kendra Gaines does. And, and Tish she can, knows it. As she I say, Tish it. cannot be shut out, so it's very important. That's correct. Kendra Gaines can strike out here for 224. Tish Johnson can strike out for 226. Kendra, a three-time Team USA member. A lot of our great athletes out here came from the collegiate programs, the, the Team USA. I mean, we, great training ground for our sport. That's how they come out seasoned enough to make shots like this early in their careers. Absolutely. Come on now. Great yes. shot. Wow. As Rhea looks on. All right, Kendra. Okay. Pin count still important here. Tish knows what she has to do. Kendra has been working with Dr. Dean Hinnitz, working a little bit on her mental game, getting her seasoned for the, the up and coming tournaments. Hold it. Still, she said, missed a little left. She you know, gave the little sigh there, but good finish for Kendra, 222. So Tish Johnson will need a double. Misses just a little left of target. Snaps through the nose, leaves an eight count. Still forces Tish to double and count. Double and seven count here for Tish Johnson. And I'm going to go out on a limb. The first match, she said she was really nervous. She didn't throw a really good shot. She carried the Brooklyn. I think she looks a little more comfortable. I'm. Go she's going to be in the pocket. Boy, I guess she was in the pocket. That is the pocket, and she liked it. As soon as she let it go, she takes her little step to the left to run it out, and result. Projected it just a little left. She's got that little bit of hook spot coming back, high flush. This is this is the key with being the only left-hander on TV, or vice versa if right. you're right-handed. Right, right, right. You can create your own little spot. Your own little hook spot, your little, your own little hole 
spot, and that's what Tish is starting to find. And nobody else is changing. That's right. Play another line. So key shot right here has to have this strike. Uh oh. She missed right. Uh oh. And leaves the eight. She looked like she didn't have footing under her even on that shot. Missed way right, right off the bat. She's pointing to the right. Just a bad shot. So Kendra Gaines advances by defeating Tish Johnson, 222 to 215. But first, when we come back, it's a stroll down memory lane for tonight's five finalists. Welcome back to the WIBC Queens Tournament from the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, Nevada. I'm Jan Schmidt, along with my partner for the evening, Carolyn Dorn Ballard, who is standing by with Kendra Gaines. Kendra, you came through in that last match, throwing two clutch shots in the 10th to put the pressure on your opponent. How do you feel going into the championship match? I feel great. Um, you know, I needed to make some good shots, and I came through when I needed to. Um, I'm looking forward to the next game. Okay, you've mentioned now the lanes are breaking down a little bit, changing just like they did all week. What's your game plan? Uh, you probably noticed that I moved a little bit left uh, those last few frames, and uh, I'm just going to try and stay ahead of my ball reaction. If it hooks, i got to move. Best of luck to you. Keep it going. Thanks. So Gaines just defeated Johnson 222 to 215, and that means Gaines and top seed Wendy McPherson will have a chance to turn tonight into a precious memory. Pro's career is full of special moments. Our top five finalists talk about their fondest memory okay. in this week's PWBA Out Loud. Coming up next, Kendra Gaines tries to stop Wendy McPherson from taking home her third tiara. Don't go away. And we're ready for our championship match of the 2003 WIBC Queens. It'll be Kendra Gaines and Wendy McPherson. And Carolyn, let's set the stage. It's a double elimination tournament. Wendy McPherson's top seed. So Kendra Gaines would have to beat her twice. Right, because Kendra has lost once. She lost last night bowling Wendy for the one and two position. So that is the great thing about leading this tournament. First shot out, little slow, leaves the three pin. I talked with Kendra. She said the lanes definitely are breaking down, and what she's going to try to do is move a little left, keep moving a little left, project the ball a little right, not too far right, because she says there is a hang spot, and hopefully create a little hold and a little hook. She'll cover this three pan up. Wendy McPherson now will be up very quickly to start her run at her third Queen's title. And when Wendy won here, in Reno, she pulled Mary Andrupa for the title, and I believe she won the first game. She said she wanted she did. to. She, she did. told me that year, I wanted to get it over with quick. I wanted to bowl a good game and just get it over with. I didn't want to have to stay for two games. She has the same philosophy. She won right here in the stadium in 2000, and she won here in Reno in another location in 1988. <laughs> Coming up light, leaving the seven pin. And I'm going to take a minute. The WIBC ladies here all week work so hard, and many of them away from their homes. And Sissy Bryant, the uh, fourth vice president of WIBC, had to miss her first grandchild's first birthday. So happy birthday to one-year-old Ashton Corey Humphreys. And your grandma's sorry she couldn't be there, but, you know, you have to travel. And she's a great lady, too, so we were glad to have her here. Some of the other top finishers in this event, there was a 13 to 16th position. Jennifer Swanson and Rachel Perez with strong showings. The 2001 Rookie of the Year, Kelly Kulik in that bracket, and the 94 Queens champ, Anne Marie Dugan. Trisha Renshaw, a great regional player from the Northeast. Maxine Nabel shooting the 300, and even had some of our Japanese ladies that made the uh, cut. Last few years, they've been bowling very well at the w WIBC tournament. They have, and it's an international competition from all over the world. And we had a lot of competitors, Australia, Japan, um, all over. As you just mentioned, that defeat last night, Wendy McPherson defeating Kendra Gaines. 
649 to 568. Only one other lady has won the Queen's. One lady has won the Queen's tournament three times. Millie Ignizio in 1967, 1970, and 1971. And she was here this week. She was here this week. And I am very proud to say that she's a friend of mine. I, I talk with her quite a bit over the internet. And she still to this day is working on her game, learning about the new equipment, and still bowling. So great ambassador for the sport. Kendra moving a little left. Good shot, ring 10. Still using the same ball. She didn't change ball. She said she's just gonna move left. Moves a little bit deeper, projects it to the right down the lane a little bit further than she had, be in the, had been in the last match. And that's the result, ring 10, good shot. Just a personal preference there, whether to change equipment or just continue to move. Absolutely, but same philosophy. This week she said, don't give up the pocket. Don't do anything too drastic. You want to stay in the pocket and work from there. That's what she's doing. Well, here's your chance to ask a question of your favorite pro. Log on to pwba.com and submit your question for the bowlersparadise.com Ask the Pro. Each week, one question will be chosen from one of the top five finalists to answer on air. And if your question is selected, you'll receive a gift from bowlersparadise.com to start. And so start sending in those questions. It's a unique opportunity. You get to ask whatever you want. Well, it may not make the air, so. You know, be cautious in what you ask. But you know, when we used to do in the past. We got some great we questions did. Yes. about oh. equipment and, and us, and even asked a lot of the uh, players' personal things about themselves, and it was great. Mm -hmm. Kendra missing a little left. Looks like she lost her footing at the foul line. Leaves the 310. Definitely got it in. Didn't project it to the right. Went mm -hmm. high. Leaves the split, but I believe she slipped at the foul line. Lost her footing just a little bit, and that caused her to miss left. Let's see. No, she didn't. I thought she did, because when she said, oh, brother, nope, she just made a bad shot. Changes balls to shoot cross lane. Spares it up. Uh, she looks like she's falling off her shots, though. On the spare I really did on the first shot. That was, that was my mistake. She stayed with the shot. She just missed left, and it was just a bad shot. Kendra's good, because at, at the point of release, she usually makes a little comment, so it kind of helps you. She tells she you what's could, going on. Yeah. Wendy, 2002 average, 214.39 for 741 games. So when people ask how many games you bowl in a year. Yeah, I that's mean, a lot. Uh, and it's that's not your 90-some your games in league. And that is tour only. Correct. Not, not practice, pro-ams, and everything else. Wendy not getting the break to kick out the seven there. Was it interesting that she said she uh, shot 260 her last game of qualifying to get to the eighth position, which ended up being what she said the key for her and her draws to get to the telecast. She had a great bracket. She bowled some low scores. People didn't average very much uh, against her, and she said that's the key. Oh, and <laughs> just hanging on. She gave it the wave, though. Ah, no problem. No problem at all, and we took a look at Tish Johnson's records earlier. Wendy McPherson, we know, has many, many records. Most PWBA television appearances, 103. And still going. <laughs> Most 200 games in match play, 24. Most consecutive 200 games bowled in qualifying, 18. Most prize money in a season, 165,000. Um, and she's our career money uh, earning leader. Earning yeah. Yes. Coming up light on that one, leaving the 2-5. She said she's using... Uh, Somewhat of a strong ball. She has them drilled two ways. She has a strong drill and a weak drill with a little bit of surface, depending on you know how she felt the lanes were going to be. She doesn't seem like she's quite comfortable yet. You know, she had been off for a while. She had carpal tunnel surgery on her right wrist over the break. and But she said it feels great. She started practicing in February, and she's practiced every day more than ever before because she said she finally feels good. Well, she started with a 13-pound ball when she first came back, mm -hmm. and then from there went right back to 15 pounds. But I bowled next to Wendy a few times, and this was the best I've seen her throw the ball in quite some time because I knew she was injured last year, and not that she threw it that bad, but this, she was aggressive, making the moves. She was really out to bowl well this week. Kendra Gaines against McPherson on TV. Career two and one. So she has the upper hand on television. Yes, and Kendra making the little noise at the foul line again. Just not making good shots the last two times up. 
missed way left. Going Brooklyn and getting the break. And I will say, she's down with the shot, but once she raises up, she knows she didn't like it. She missed left, came, came across her body, which I'm going to say is very shocking for Kendra because Kendra is a very good TV bowler. She was also ha starting to have some arm or wrist problems and dropped her ring finger over this break for a little bit more comfort. Looked like a better shot. She got it out onto the lane, but she still seems to be missing left quite a bit. She did say, I need to project the ball a little bit to the right. They are starting to break down for me. She hasn't been doing that in her last four shots. Coming across her body a little bit, pulls up out of it really quick. Didn't have the footing, just a bad shot. Well, she needs to spare this to keep her lead by one pin. Changes balls to the spare oh. ball, goes straight, okay. only gets the three pin. Doesn't cover it up, so will it be Gaines or McPherson that win the coveted Queens title? Right now, McPherson has the lead. We'll be right back. The last time the Queens tournament was held here at the National Bowling Stadium in Reno, the top seed was Wendy McPherson. She defeated Marianne DeRupo 227 to 202 to win her second Queens crown. That was in 2000. Ben comes here every three years. So in 2003, Wendy McPherson right now in the lead in the championship match by 11 pins over Kendra Gaines. Only one strike so far, Carolyn, between these two players through four and a half frames. And Wendy's match play record against Kendra, one and two. And Wendy, again, another great TV bowler. When Wendy needs a shot, she's always there in the pocket. Once again, you don't win 19 titles without doing it once in a while, right? Right, exactly. I was talking about her practice regimen. She said she bowled five to seven games a day for the last... Well, since early February, so that's enough to get you in shape to come out. Coming up high, though, and that's a difficult spare, three, six, nine, ten. She went, she missed right. The first shot on this lane, which two, four, five. She looks like she moved in, but she missed way left. Lane still jumping on the back end. Leaves a three, six, nine, ten. Now she'll shoot this with her strike ball. She's going to move left, use her strike ball to get out that back pin. Just nice. like that. Exactly. Textbook. That is not an easy spare to make. Moves a little left of her target, gets the ball right. Ball hooks right into the spare. Most of the, most of the bowlers use their strike ball for that spare because of the back pin. When you use the spare ball, if it's a plastic ball, it has a habit of deflecting and leaving the nine pin. Wendy, 6-0. Six. Six oh, that's in those three game matches. The only one undefeated in the tournament is the top seed in this event. Much better shot by Wendy. Oh, oh no. Oh, okay. The messenger. All right. The messenger took one. Much better shot by Wendy. Her projection was a lot better. Was a little bit further to the right. Ball comes in half pocket, leaves the 7-10, but the pin comes across the deck and gets that 10 out. And actually, the 7 is just wobbling. It is. I thought the 7 was going to go first, and, and it stood. So right now, leaves herself, which should be an easy spare for the bowler of the decade in the 90s, and it is. She can breathe a sigh of relief as she's up by six pins. Got the battle of the wits here and for the championship match. Two thousand two average for Kendra, two thirteen point five seven, seven hundred and forty three games. Oh, again, I'm liking that, but she gets the win. Again, left the target. She got out of that one quick because you could hear the ball hit the lane right over the foul line. See, right over the foul line, she gets out of the ball real quick, gets into a roll. Misses left. It's just a bad shot. 
There it is, just barely getting out over the foul line. When Kendra was bowling good in the last match, she was getting the ball out onto the lane. Her projection was to the right, and she was allowing the lane to take the ball into the pocket. Okay, so she'll see if she can utilize that bad shot that she just made, that Brooklyn, and try to carry a strike, and she does. A lot of amateurs bowled this event, and if you're an amateur female bowler with an average of 180 or higher, the PWBA would like to invite you to bowl in regional events. If you average 190 or higher, you're invited to enter national events. You can go to pwba.com for complete schedules of both tours and for entry forms, or you can always call the office. That's 815-332-5756. Come on out and join us. Wendy now up in the seventh frame, coming very light, leaving a 245. And there was a lead change with Kendra Gaines throwing that double. So Wendy now trailing in this first match. Don't forget, if she loses, we will throw it out the door and start over with another championship match. I did ask Wendy last night if it got near the end of the match and she didn't think she was going to win, would she experiment? And she said definitely. But didn't want to have to. Right. And, and you know what? You have to do that. It doesn't matter. I mean, if you've got two games to go and you are lost, you've got to figure something out because you've only got one game left. Just kind of, that's exactly what we were talking about, the format during the week. The first game is gone and you don't have anything. You better experiment to find, find out what's going on. Youngest woman to capture that triple crown. As you see, two WIBC Queens tournaments already going for the third. Much Tripping better shot. Four. Getting a break, knocking that four out. Knowing the champion that Wendy is, she's sitting down thinking, I don't want this game to go to the second match. Right, absolutely. I want to figure it out, make a good shot on this right lane, and set myself up. Okay, so Kendra Brooklyn, last time on this lane, has not really made a good shot on this lane in no. her last three attempts. Oh. Early again off her hand. And she let you know about it. She she yeah. gave the little, I don't want to say she grunts, but she gave the little, uh. Looks from everywhere. She, she let us know. Looks from everywhere, but she, that was very, very early down on the lane. Just barely getting it out over the foul line, missing way left, more left than she was the last match. And the, honestly, the middle of the lane hooks. They said that from the practice shots during the week, the middle of the lane hooked. So you have to project the ball to the right. She said if she started to experience that, she was going to keep moving left. But well, once you get to that middle where it's really hooking, you have to make a big jump left. There, big was, there was no moving boards when you were playing in. You had to move zones, and that was to another arrow. It was not until later in the week that the shot for most of the players moved to the right. So Kendra, at 29 years of age, has her first shot at a Queen's title, but she would have to win this game and win another game against Wendy McPherson. That was a good shot. She got the ball to the right, came back light, and blew the rack. That's what she's telling herself. Let's get it going. PWBA will be off for a few weeks, but tune in Sunday, June 1st for the Women's U.S. Open Bowling Championship live on ESPN. It'll be the richest payout of 2003. Kim Terrell will attempt to defend her U.S. Open title from Sunnybrook Lanes in Metro Detroit. A full field of pros and amateurs are expected to compete that Sunday, June 1st, live on ESPN, 1 o'clock Eastern. That kicks off seven live Sundays of PWBA. And Wendy is now alive in this match as she just took the lead with that strike. I'm glad, I'm glad she didn't prove me wrong because I did go out on a limb saying when, I know what Wendy's thinking. She moved left but got the ball further right, a little more direct, up the lane. Okay, so she and leads she by... The, yeah, sorry, sorry. Carolyn, no, no, but I right. want to set this up. She mm -hmm. leads by four pins. She can shut out Kendra Gaines and would win her third Queens tournament. Wendy will need two strikes here and some pin count to shut out Kendra Gaines. Well, she tripped the four pin on her last shot. Here she goes. There's the first one. Nothing Kendra can do but sit and wait. She did that last match, waiting to see if Tish Johnson would double, and she didn't. And just to clarify, on that right lane, it looks like Wendy moved a little right. I made a mistake. 
and through it a little bit more direct. This lane seems to be hooking more. That's what Kendra also told me. Wendy made the move. I took advantage of it. She would need a strike here and then have to fill seven. Big shots. Oh, my. She did it. Five, seven, the last ones to go. She got it in just a little bit, but she's deep enough. The ball got down the lane, and she blew out the 5-7. And she knows it. 7 count. Needs a 7 count. Got it right. Okay. Oh my. Okay. <laughs> and she's ready. She can breathe. She's waving to her father, Chris McPherson, way down there on lane one. He doesn't sit on the show. Wave to him. I couldn't even throw the ball. <laughs> now, what's with all these 19 and 20 time champions telling me they can't throw the ball? But she, she but was she, lucky to get seven. Yes, yeah, she was. And she said it. But you know what? She threw the first two great. Yes, she did. Sign of a true champion making the move. There you go. Kendra Gaines will just finish out on a lane that she did not have a lot of success on. No, and she's off to a great start for 2003, and I think we're going to see a lot of Kendra Gaines. She's one of our young talents, and she's ready for the new season. Wendy just looking down. I think I think she's trying to let it all sink in. Well, you know, she goes last year, the first year without a title in many years. And here she comes and she starts right after surgery with the victory. So Wendy McPherson becomes the second woman to win three Queens championships. Millie Ignizio was the first, dating back to 1971. So <laughs> she's letting you know she was nervous. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you. President, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 218 for Wendy McPherson. 193, respectable for Kendra Gaines, but it's Wendy McPherson on top. She is the Queen's champion. Stay with us. We'll talk with her. PWBA.com, your source for the latest PWBA news, information, merchandise, and more. There is your champion of the 2003 WIBC Queens Tournament, Wendy McPherson. Final score, 218 to 193. And here with a beautiful pendant is WIBC Executive Director, Roseanne Kuhn. Wendy, I uh, want to congratulate you on your win, uh, 2003 Queens. I remember 2000, and here we are back in 2003. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Roseanne. Okay, and I know you want another tiara, so sure, Betty yeah. Barnes, Sergeant at Arms, is coming in with that. Thank you. Okay, and finally, the cash. Uh oh, we're losing the tiara. Okay, and the cash, Roseanne Kuhn with a check. Congratulations. How about $14,000? Thank you very Isn't much. Isn't that wonderful? Great. Thank you. Congratulations. You're awesome. We also have a beautiful um, trophy here in honor of your win today, too. So congratulations Thank again. Thank you. Wow. <laughs> you collect more for one title here. Let me, yeah, let me help you. Let me let, let the court jester help you here. Let us wear it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm not giving it up. Oh, <laughs> Wendy's keeping it. Okay, Wendy, you comment? Wow, I have so much to say. Um, first off, I would sincerely like to thank uh, Roseanne, also Ruth Williams, um, and the entire, everybody from WIBC for having this tournament yearly. Um, it's quite a treat for us to come out and bowl the match play style. 
and uh, it, it's really quite exciting every year. I'd also like to thank uh, Tri Properties, also the uh, Re National Reno Bowling Stadium here. And um, on, on my own note, I would sincerely like to thank my companies that I so proudly work for, Columbia 300, Mongoose, and Contour Power Grips. They have been behind me my entire career, and I'd like to thank them very, very much for their support. Also, I'd like to thank my dad for coming up this week. It's my lucky charm. Well, it was an emotional moment, Wendy McPherson, and it's your third Queen's title. Congratulations. That marks career title number 20, major number six. Congratulations again. Watch for the PWBA's return with another major, the Women's U.S. Open Bowling Championship, live on ESPN Sunday, June 1st at 1 p.m. Eastern. For Carolyn Dorn Ballard, I'm Jan Schmidt, extending prayers to all those fighting overseas for a safe return. Happy Easter to all. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com.